August Minias with Real Estate Investing Demystified. We're in Salt Lake City at the best ever conference, and we're over our one and only great friend, Dugan Kelly, one of the top um, you know, syndication attorneys. And uh, great to you know get a chance to interview you, Dugan. Tell us uh, what brings you to the event. Hey, I love this event. Uh, Joe Fairless and his, his entire team put on one of the best real estate events in the country. I, I make it a point to come to this event all the time. I get to see great friends like August and Ava, clients, operators, syndicators, passive investors, high net worth individuals, family offices. There's a little bit of everything for anyone Absolutely. here at this event. Absolutely. Now, Dugan, you're, you're the advocate to your clients. Yeah. You're kind of that first stage for any investment group yeah. trying to get a deal together. But, you know, as a lot of speakers on stage are talking about doom and gloom, Neil Bauer is talking about yeah. a lot of distressed deals. Yeah. Are you seeing that currently in the space? There's always distressed deals, right? So there's, depending on the market, right? We're in a challenging economic market, but all that allows us to do really is to pivot or be realistic and flexible with sellers and other people. So there's always deals to be made. What I'm telling clients to do is be realistic, realistic about what you think you can raise in capital and what your appetite or what your retail investor's appetite is in the market and really pick your markets uh, carefully. So maybe the level of competition that you had in primary markets, uh, maybe you need to go to a tertiary market or a secondary market. Maybe you need to readjust your idea of instead of purchase price of 10 to 15 million, maybe you're backing that down to three to $5 million, right? right. There's a ton of capital on the sidelines right now ready to be deployed. If people are not gonna, if you don't have a deal, They've got to have to invest. They're going to invest with somebody. So I'm telling clients, be realistic, but don't procrastinate uh, the entire way. Otherwise, you're not going to you're not going to succeed at right. all. In these economic environments, you have the distress side or the opportunistic side. Absolutely. So on the distress side, do you have any advice for groups trying to put deals together? You know, uh, when it comes to, for example, things like capital call yep. or cash calls, is something that's written in the subscription agreement, in the offering documents. Maybe quickly you can say, what is a cash call? Yeah, absolutely. So cash call is a very important device for both the investor as well as the operator. If you don't have the opportunity to uh, be asked to contribute, usually these are voluntary cash calls. That means that the sponsor, operator, syndicator needs additional capital. They need additional funds to do something. It might not be that they can't pay their mortgage, right? It might be that there was a casualty at the property and they are waiting for insurance money. They need additional money uh, to fund a building project or something else to actually help uh, make the property more or better and, and uh, more cash flow positive. That needs to be in your operating agreement. So just like Neil said in there, it's a very important component of any operator's tool belt. And it's not just for the operator, it's for the investor as well. So imagine if you invested into a deal and you didn't have a capital call in there and then you're like, what? Well, if there's a capital call, what's going to happen? Are you just going to hand the keys back? That's ridiculous. The number one duty of every syndicator operator or syndicator is to make sure that they protect the investor's money. And by protecting the investor's money, you have to have things like a capital call built into your right. operating agreement. Right. Let's talk about on the opportunistic side. Okay. If you're a syndication group, you're looking at deals still, and if yep. the numbers make sense in the current environment, you're going to purchase a deal, but you're purchasing that deal from somebody who is in a distressed situation. Is there anything that syndicators should watch out for or investors should watch out for when they're going into a deal that was a distressed deal? No, in fact, I am very bullish on operators and syndicators that are able to come in and help other syndicators bail them out or provide distressed funding rescue fund, stabilization fund, a recap fund. These are all adjectives that are often used synonymously with one another. But the end goal is to protect the initial investor's capital, also provide an opportunity for other new incoming investors to get a great deal. So imagine if you were coming in to recap a fund with a two and a half million dollar raise, and now you've taken up or acquired all of the GP interest in that same deal and provide significant value for the incoming investors and yet still provide an avenue of hope and a mechanism for existing investors to get paid. So even in distressed opportunities, there are ways in which it can be structured 
that benefits the existing investors as well as the new investors coming into that deal that'll step into a great asset class. Got it. Thank you for that. Now, you've been in this space for a long time. Yeah. You've gone through a few cycles in this space. What is your prediction? Jerome Powell is saying he's going to increase the interest rate. He's not slowing down. Yeah. Do, you, do you feel that should smart money sit on the sideline? Should people be opportunistic, like advised by many? What is your uh, prescription for this? No, I'm bullish. I think you need to be cautiously optimistic, which means you need to be reasonably prudent in the deals that you bet and underwrite. I do think interest rates are going to go up a little bit more. But remember, the interest rates theoretically that the Fed raises aren't necessarily tied to what the uh, agency or bridge lenders are actually willing to loan. We're seeing now, right now, in March of 2023, bridge lenders start to roll out more fixed debt products. So I think by the summer, by Q2, Q3 of 2023, we're going to see existing bridge lenders throughout the country start to roll out new products in the debt space that are going to be very attractive to syndicators and operators. So you need to be able and ready to capitalize on those opportunities. Absolutely. You're a gentleman and a scholar. Thank you, dude. Thank Please you. Let our audience know how to get in touch with you and you know how to get connect with you. Hey, thankfully, I have a very unique name. So you can reach me. You can Google through my name, Dugan, D-U-G-A-N, or you can email me at Dugan at Kelly Clark. K-E-L-L-E-Y, Clark, C-L-A-R-K-E.com. Love to speak to any of your people. Thank you, my man. Thanks, bud. I appreciate it.